beginning of space exploration, lifting larger and heavier payload has been the key driver in many new rocket designs. Heavier payload can mean a more capable spacecraft or many smaller spacecraft on a single launch vehicle. But as spacecraft became more capable and embarked on extreme missions, their needs for more scientific instruments, bigger high gain antennas, and solar panels increased. It quickly got to a point where even though the payload was light enough to be carried by a rocket, it couldn't fit inside the rocket's payload fairing. The obvious solution to this was to fold the spacecraft to make it fit inside the fairing. But unfolding it was not guaranteed if it was not done the correct way. Unfolding a spacecraft in space is a tricky process that has to be done in a particular order or often within a certain time frame after launch. That's because in the folded state, a spacecraft is unable to generate power unless it's nuclear power. It's also unable to communicate with Earth efficiently, if at all, in the folded state. The fact that without power and communication, a spacecraft is totally useless makes the unfolding process that much more critical. The unfolding process is taken to a whole other level when rovers are involved. For this video, however, we'll only talk about spacecraft unfolding. As the spacecraft is assembled for launch, each folded component must be secured in place. This is very important because at launch, a spacecraft will experience not just extreme g-force, but also many kinds of strong, low-frequency vibrations. These vibrations come from the rocket engine, rocket sound reflected from the launch pad back onto the rocket, aerodynamic turbulence, and others. It's important that during this phase, the mechanism that keeps the spacecraft folded in place does not fail because of these vibrations. It's also equally important that this mechanism is reliable enough that after the spacecraft is released from the rocket, it's able to unfold it. Since unfolding a spacecraft usually happens only once, many folded subsystems release mechanisms are spring-loaded. That is, a mechanical spring provides the energy and mechanical motion necessary for the unfolding. It's simple, very reliable, and has a high force-to-mass ratio. The energy required to release the spring can be provided by an electric current or pyrotechnic detonation. So, let's look at how these hold-down release mechanisms, or HDRMs for short, achieve clean and reliable separation under these conditions. There are two basic types of HDRM, pyrotechnic and non-explosive. We'll start with the pyrotechnic design. It's the simpler of the two. There are many different configurations, but the basic design is as follows. A shaft is made inside of the bolt that's specifically made to break at a certain location along its length. This location typically has a smaller diameter than the rest of the bolt. Inside the shaft, a low sensitivity, high density explosive is placed. On top of that, a small amount of low density explosive is placed. Finally, a filament or bridge wire initiator is placed above the low density explosive. When it's time to separate the parts that are held together by the bolt, an electrical current is passed through a filament inside the initiator. It heats up quickly and then ignites a small amount of pyrotechnic powder. The powder burns rapidly, creating lots of gas at high temperature and pressure. This causes the low density explosive to detonate. The detonation creates a shock wave, which then detonates the high density explosive. The final explosion inside of the bolt causes the part of the bolt that has the smaller diameter to fail first because it's the weakest part of the bolt. The bolt breaks apart cleanly, causing the two parts to separate. This sequence of events may seem overly complicated, and you may wonder why the high-density explosive is not detonated directly. The main reasons are safety, reliability, and accuracy. The high-density explosive is made less sensitive to prevent it from exploding due to forces encountered during the mission. Because of this, a small explosive is required to trigger it. This comes from the low-density explosive. 
To trigger this explosive, an exploding bridge wire is used because it can reliably detonate the low density explosive accurately in a certain amount of time after activation. This timing is important during deployment because a one second delay means that the spacecraft will be many kilometers away from where an event was to be triggered. Another configuration for the pyrotechnic HDRM is one where the expanding gas generated by the explosive is used to push two hemispheres of a threaded coupling apart. This will then loosen the bolt that screwed into the coupling. A compressed spring can then pull the parts away. Pyrotechnic HDRM suffers from one major issue. The detonation of explosives produce shock waves when they are triggered. This shock wave is transmitted throughout the spacecraft and can potentially damage electronic circuit boards, optical device alignments, and other sensitive components if it's not dealt with. Reducing these shock waves was one of the reasons for the development of our second type of HDRMs, non-explosive HDRMs. One type of non-explosive HDRM is the split spool initiator. In this design, a groove is carved into the middle of a cylinder. The cylinder is split in half lengthwise, but is then held together by wrapping a tensile wire around it. One end of this wire is fixed to the frame of the HDRM, and the other is hooked to a link wire. Inside the groove of the cylinder is the plunger pin, which is being pressed into the groove by a spring-loaded attachment. Inside this attachment is the threaded coupling to which the bolt is attached. This coupling is also split lengthwise, but held together by protrusions inside of the attachment. To trigger this HDRM and release the bolt, a high current is passed through the link wire. This causes it to vaporize and release one end of the tensile wire. Now with only one side held down, the tensile wire unwinds and is unable to hold the two hemispheres of the cylinder together. Under pressure from the spring, the attachment along the plunger pin are now pushed forward now that the cylinder is no longer blocking the movement of the plunger pin. As a consequence of the attachment moving forward, the protrusions that kept the two halves of the threaded coupling together are now moved forward. This then results in the two halves of the coupling moving apart and releasing the bolt. Just like with the pyrotechnic design, the apparent complexity of this design is related to safety and reliability. Since this design does not contain any chemical reaction, the delay from trigger to release is more consistent. The rest of the mechanism is there to redirect the energy of the spring to make the connection between the bolt and coupling fail cleanly. As spacecraft become bigger and more complicated, innovative ways of folding a spacecraft to fate inside a rocket are being created. The James Webb Space Telescope will be the most complicated spacecraft NASA has ever unfolded as of 2020. This process is so complicated that it is spread out over a 30-day period. Every single HDRM has to do its job, or the mission may not be able to achieve all or any of its objectives. So while HDRMs are not talked about frequently when it comes to spacecraft systems, they are literally the link between a useless and a useful spacecraft. I'm DexDFX for the Celestial Sphere.